Good morning. Good morning, church. My name is Daniel Daly. For those of you that don't know, um, I run a teen group at uh, New Life alongside uh, my wife, Liz, and Mauricio, and alongside his wife, uh, Sandra. Uh, I've been asked to talk about a psalm of my choice, and the psalm that I've uh, selected is Psalm 103. Um, I really, really love the theme that just runs through the psalm. Um, and that theme is this, bless the Lord. And that's the one point I want you to take away uh, from this talk, if you take anything away at all, um, that is to bless the Lord. Um, we're going to go through the psalm and find out how and why we should bless the Lord, excuse me, uh, with, um, you know, just looking at various points um, and uh, really sort of magnifying some bits and stuff. So, yeah, you'll be blessed. Um but yeah, I mean, my my initial kind of introduction to the Psalms is quite interesting because as a kid, my granddad uh, used to he used to he used to make us uh, memorize Psalms um, whole sort of from from top to bottom, and uh, you know, it, 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 later on in life, it's been a, a real blessing as I've sort of grown in my walk with God, uh, and. Um, yeah, they really sort of form this bedrock of, of who God is in my in my mind. But um, the more I've been walking with God, these things have like seeped into my heart. So um, I would really encourage you to sort of try, if you can, to memorize them. Um, you know, I mean, maybe not put in the same sort of uh, stipulations on on the whole setup with like my granddad not letting us go out to play unless we did <laughs> learn the song. But anyway, let's let's go on. Uh, let's hear the reading and then uh, we'll go from there. This is a reading of Psalm 103, a Psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. Heeding the voice of his word, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his. Who do his pleasure bless the lord all his works in all places of his dominion bless the lord oh my soul thank you very much that was a susan my mother-in-law all the way from uh tennessee usa um yeah so bless what does it mean I looked up the definition and um, it comes from the word Hebrew word Barak, which means to kneel. Um, and the Hebrews have often um, a, an action to define their words, which is really interesting. In the context of this psalm, uh, David uses the word bless 
and uh, it can simply be defined as glorifying God um, for his benefits or his blessings. And uh, ultimately, that's what David does here. He makes a list. Um, so he's counting his blessings. And he, uh, I, I, want, I want us to do the same because I tried it. And I must say that God lifted me. I was in a really low place and uh, I started to go over my life and look at it and, you know, how God has blessed me with my business, how he's blessed me with my daughter, my wife and so forth. And, you know, my mood completely changed. I'm a simple guy. I like to play basketball. I like to eat food. But if you sort of take those things away, then things start to get a bit cloudy and, and grey in my world sort of thing. But, um, you know, God is good all the time. And uh, really, we should really just focus on him at, at, in this time of, of lockdown. Um, he starts the psalm uh, really interestingly because he's talking to himself and he's really trying to encourage himself uh, to, to, to bless the Lord. And I found myself in that same place as I just described. Um, I really needed to pick myself up. And um, in, in doing so, uh, David... Um, comes across the fact that God is holy before he even starts his list. Um, he's, he's, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. Sorry, just before that, he says, bless his holy name. Um, and, and really, that's the one reason why we should always be able to bless God. He's holy. He's far above uh, all that we can think of or imagine. Um, he's self-sufficient. He doesn't need us at all, but he's good. He's kind. He's merciful. Um, at all at the same time um and again like looking around at, at the society um everyone's asking questions people are asking questions of existence of faith uh, this whole lockdown has really sort of spun everybody's kind of worldview and perspectives um on their head really um but i feel like the, the again david in this psalm by introducing the, the fear of the lord which is really um important in this psalm he he really kind of addresses that um, indirectly, uh, let's say. Um, but by verse four, um, David says, uh, it says here, who redeems your life from destruction, when he's talking about God, uh, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And uh, really that, that for me, that just spoke of the Holy Spirit and uh, how we, how God gives us his spirit when we come to the faith. Um, and so I looked again over that whole section from, from verses one to four, and really, David there is, is um, counting his blessing for his salvation. He's really thanking God for his salvation uh, because he knows that that is so important to him. And it should be to us as well. It certainly is to me and becoming more so that the older I get uh, in the Lord, so to speak. I really do value my salvation in him. Uh, and I want you to do the same. You should try it. Um, try and, and thank God just for, for, for who he is, you know, uh, for how he's forgiven your sins, how he's redeemed your life, um, how he's crowned you with these tender mercies. Um, he goes on in verse six to 10. Um, and he uh, he's he's talking about Moses. Now he recalls Moses, um, the person whose shoes that he was in because he's leading the nation. Um, and he's talking about how God reveals his character one in in the emancipation of the um the jewish people the hebrews and two in the actual meeting that takes place at the burning bush exodus chapter 34 verse 6 and the lord passed before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth He's merciful indeed. Uh, verse six starts with the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Um, and we're, you know, we're in a state of, of oppression at the moment with this lockdown and the coronavirus and so forth. But the real, um, the real uh, virus that man has faced is, is sin, isn't it? And we know that the wages of sin is death. Um, and without the um, spilling of blood, this is how seriously God takes it. Uh, there is no remission of sin um so uh yeah but i mean god in his mercy but god in his mercy he laid he laid that justice upon jesus so that um we we might go free and we might be uh, released from this oppression of sin isn't it and yet again that's just another reason 
uh, why we can bless the Lord, how and why we can bless the Lord. Uh, by verse 11, we're at the heart of the psalm, verses 11 to 14. And it's here David introduces the fear of the Lord, something very special that he held very highly. Um, uh, and it, pretty much in the Bible from cover to cover, we see that this is such a, an important, important thing. Um, it's uh, of no insignificance that um, uh, Jesus, when uh, he was crucified with the two robbers, um, one was mocking him, the other one uh, was asking the mocker, do you not fear God? You know, um, it's, it's in the fear of the, the Lord that God delights, actually. Um, it says about Jesus that he will delight in the fear of the Lord. So really, that's what gets God's attention. Um, but again, it's presented in, in this psalm in 11 to 14 with um with condition um we see in um uh verse 11 it says for as far as the heavens are above the earth so great is his mercy toward those that fear him um and again in 13 it says as as a father pities his children so the lord pities those who fear him you know if we want to if we want to really experience the mercy and the kindness of god fear him if we want to really re receive that sort of fatherly kind of love and attention, um, then then fear him. You know, um, again, the fear of the Lord comes with blessings. So we should flavor our list, really, our list of, of blessing the Lord in reverence. We should flavor it with a, a, a respect um, that is second to none, you know, at the, of the highest and utmost respect. And that's what David does here. Um, he continues in... Uh, in the psalm, in, in this section, uh, on uh, verse 14, he says, for we, he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. And that's really a re reference there back to uh, creation, isn't it? Um, uh, that we are, we are, we're just dust. Uh, and, and man has no purpose unless God comes and form him and, and, and breathe into his life. Uh, and that's really like what the question that is, of sorry what people are asking today like uh, what what's my purpose this coronavirus has kind of like provoked those those questions out of, of people um even in ecclesiastes um we can see this let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is man's all and that's the conclusion that king solomon came to really um after being able to uh, to chase any pleasure his mind could entertain, it was simply the conclusion is simply to fear fear the Lord and uh, obey His commandments. That's that's all of our existence. You know, I, I suffered two losses this year. Um, one was um, a friend who uh, was in a rap group called the Foreign Beggars, uh, Ebo, um, who passed away. Uh, just trying to have a cigarette on his roof, he fell um, tragically to his to his death. Um, I was, you know, shortly after his passing, I was put into a, um, a WhatsApp group with all these people, and um, you know, people sharing stories and this and that. And then one of his um, one of his group members, his cl closest friends, Pavan, uh, shared that he was really asking questions um, of of the universe, um, to quote him. Uh, about his existence and trying to find peace in himself before he passed away. Um, and I mean, it saddens me to say, but that is that is not what the fear of the Lord is, you know? Um, he's asking questions of the created and not the, the creator. Um, the second loss was um, my father-in-law, Richard Waters, who, um, a lovely man, passed away um, but in his life, if there's one thing that stood out, is it was that he feared the Lord. He, he really did walk with God, and he revered who who God was. Um, you know, and if we go to, to to verse 17 here, it says, "But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him." So we've got two people here, two people that are close to me. Um, which one receives the mercy of the Lord? The one that feared him, my father-in-law. Two cross, two people on the cross when Jesus was getting crucified. Which one received mercy? The one who asked to the other one who was mocking, do you not fear God? 
seizing your blessing with the fear of the Lord. Um, David continues in the psalm, um, and by verse 19, he um, closes out. And it's much, it, the, the tone's kind of changed now. It's not so much more him kind of encouraging himself and jeering himself up to bless the Lord. It's more, it's more commanding. It's like, yeah, I've gone through all this, this, this list of mine, and this God is so worthy of everybody's praise, of everybody's worship. And then, and then he carries on to list who and what should be um, uh, blessing the Lord. And, that, and he leaves no stone unturned. Um, and it's really here that um, I would like to, to, to close uh, by, by returning to the middle of, of the psalm. Um, and by returning to the cross, in fact, uh, and you'll see the cross here in the middle, which is really, really quite uh, profound. Um, let me read this. Let me read this. For as high, sorry, excuse me. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those that fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. And that's really talking about Jesus, the mercy of God coming down to remove our sins by the cross. And so I want to... Um, I want to invite the people that haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, um, haven't got a clue about this this cross, haven't got a clue about this God of mercy, this God of loving kindness. Um, I want to invite you. I want to invite you to repent. I want to invite you to, to turn around, to come and have your sins forgiven. I want to, I want to invite you to Come and be healed, as it says in verse 2 here. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your inequities, who heals all your diseases. I want to I want to invite you to for you to come and have your life redeemed from destruction by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to come and receive this loving kindness and this tender mercy that is his Holy Spirit. I want you to, to be invited to come and have your mouth satisfied with the praise and the worship and the blessing in reverence to the God of creation. I'm gonna invite you to have your youth renewed like the eagles. And that's, that's, that's the eternal life that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ's death and resurrection I want you to come and bless the Lord When upon life's billow you are tempest tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings name them one by one And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord 